consciously date yourself. Fall so madly, so deeply in love with you that anybody who comes into your space is extra. Be so deeply entrenched in your own consciousness. Like, allow yourself to be penetrated and permeated with love based on who you be. And anybody who comes into your space, because we are magnetic, we are, we are energetic beings. Let's go, blessings and blessings. Today's transmission is the top five tips on conscious dating. Let's get it. Let's go. I'm so pumped, so excited because this subject is near and dear to my heart. I've been coaching people in my program, Stretch 22, uh, in the Abundance Reset, and all the other things I have, uh, Amplify with Alexi and Preston, every single program I have, I've been coaching people on this thing, and it's one of the things that is near and dear to my heart because I declared that I was calling in my one in 2012 and in 2013, I met my wife, the woman of my dreams. And in between that time, I was consciously dating and calling in the one. And so what I'm about to share with you are five tips, five things that I did that I also coach other people to do that have worked tremendously over and over and over again and remembering that we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act, but a habit, right? That's Aristotle. So if you are practicing conscious dating, conscious anything, which assumes that you are aware of yourself, aware of your shadows, aware of the things that may be blocking your blessings and may be blocking your abundance, then that's going to be a gift whether you meet the one, the two, or the seven. So let's start with tip number one. Tip number one for conscious dating is be honest. I was coaching a guy the other day in one of my programs, Stretch 22, and he was sharing that he, you know, he wants a woman that's like into kink, right? He likes playing, role playing and things of that nature. And I said, show me your profile right now. And when I looked at his profile, on an online dating app, it said nothing about that. And I said, bro, why is this not on your profile? And he's like, oh, I don't wanna scare people away. Well, tip number one is be honest. If you're going to call in your person and you're excited to consciously date, why not start from the foundation of what is true for you? I don't care how weird you are. I don't care how many things or weird things you're into. There are other people who are looking directly for that thing. And so if you are starting with dishonesty because you're trying to fit into a box, fit into a mold, fit into what you think other people will like about you, if your profile picture or whatever it is you're putting out into the space is like the safe vanilla version of you, you're already starting from a lie and that's going to create a deficit. So tip number one is Whatever quirks, whatever desires, whatever kinks, whatever things you're into, lead with that. One of the best things you could do, and I do this, I tell this to my coaches when I'm coaching people on how to build their business, is, is to alienate people. Take such a position that it creates opposition and it makes some people run away and it makes some people run towards you. But if you're not honest, if you're not alienating the people who aren't into kink and all the other things, then you're gonna get a, a, a flood of people that you don't necessarily align with. And so the name of the game is fly your freak flag as high as possible. <laughs> Tip number two is let go and let God. Let go and let it flow. Uh, so many of us have become control freaks, trying to hold on and figure it out like it's a math problem. And Dating and love cannot be figured out from your masculine. It cannot be controlled from your mind. If you want to consciously date, you must surrender 
to the process and understand that whoever is for you exists in this now moment. They are here on the planet right now. They are eating, they are drinking, they are swimming, they are doing something right now somewhere on the planet preparing themselves for you. But it's not your job to make it happen, it's your job to welcome it. Remember, spirit can only do for us what it can do through us. We are all divine power plants, magnets, if you may, generating our own weather. And so the more welcome you make yourself by letting go of control and surrendering right, and allowing the grass to grow, allowing the seed to germinate, allowing the egg and the chicken, allowing the chicken to experience such growth that it has an evolutionary, an evolutionary impulse to peck and open up more possibilities. You have to let go of control. Tip number three is hire slow, fire fast. This is a term that we use in the entrepreneurial world, but it definitely goes to the dating world. And what I mean by that is don't be in such a rush to get there. Even when you meet somebody who fits some of the criteria, some of you have the tendency, the moment someone even has an inch of what you're desiring because you're so thirsty and hungry for desire, you're so thirsty and hungry to prove to your, your best friend that you also can have a person, you're so hungry and thirsty to show your mom that you're, you're, you're working on it and you're going to get her some grandkids that you'll make somebody who isn't your somebody, somebody, and then be mad when it crashes. So when I say high or slow, I mean date. Get to know them. Hey, if you want to have sex immediately, definitely do it. But I ask you to ask yourself, I, I challenge you, to ask yourself where it's coming from. Is it coming from the fullness of who and what you are? Or is it coming from people pleasing? Is it coming from a desire to be liked? Are you trying to fit this person into a mold because you're so hungry to be held? So hire slow and fire fast. Fire fast, what I mean by that, and I'll give you an example, I went on a date, um, with a girl, this is way back in the day, um, maybe six months before I met Alexi. And this was this gorgeous model who I met. She was also signed to Wilhelmina like I was. And uh, we met at a casting and we talked briefly, really short. And we uh, exchanged uh, a few text messages. And then uh, I think a day later, I said, okay, I'm gonna pick you up. And I picked her up, she got in the car, she was Drop dead gorgeous. And we were supposed to go to uh, Griffith Park, the observatory, uh, to, you know, watch the sunset uh, on a blanket. And while we're driving there, it was like energetically, it's like every minute that went by, I was like, you are ugly to me. And and not like ugly physically, but this just her, her energetics, something about her personality, her attitude just did not fit. And... By the time we got there, we parked, we were walking, we got to the grass. I literally laid the blanket out. She started to take her shoes off and I said, stop. And she was like, what? I was like, nah, keep your shoes on. She was like, uh, okay. I was like, we're going to go. She was like, what do you mean? I was like, I got to be honest with you. I don't like you. And she was like, what? And I was like, I, I genuinely don't like your personality. And I'm sure there's somebody for you who will love your personality, but for me, um, I'm not feeling these vibes, and so I'm not gonna waste your time, and I'm not gonna waste mine. I'm gonna take you home. And she was like, oh. And she walked back to the car in silence. We got in the car in silence. We drove home in silence. She got out of the car, slammed the door, and went in her house. And some of you may be saying, wow, P, that's really harsh. It could be considered that. But for me, it was a practice in honesty. I had been doing the opposite all my life, people pleasing and saying yes when I really meant no. 
And so this was one of those opportunities for me to practice something, to put something into practice and to build the muscle memory of being honest and speaking my truth. Now that woman may have said, oh, this is terrible. He's an a-hole and all that stuff. But the truth is, is that I served her in that moment. Yes, I could have been more tactful and all that stuff, but high or slow, fire fast. Tip number four, and this one is gonna blow your mind. Ask for help. So many of you are trying to do it by yourselves. You have friends. You know people who know people. Ask people to help you. Ask them to set you up. Ask them to give you feedback about how you show up. Some of you want Brad Pitt, but you don't necessarily look like the type that Brad Pitt would want, right? So sometimes I have a buddy, I have a friend who, I think he's 51 now. We don't really talk that much anymore, but he's probably 51 or 52. And I remember this 10 years ago, back in the day, every girl he would meet, he'd be like, no, she's, she's beneath me. I'm like, bro, have you seen yourself? Like, I love that you have such high standards, but like, you probably want to take a look in the mirror. And I don't mean just physically. Like, this dude was wanting some like high powered, you know, CEO woman who's got all of her stuff together when he didn't have his together. And there was just so many things where I was like, oh, you, you clearly can't see yourself. And so what I'm challenging you to do, and I'm not saying that's you, but what I'm challenging you to do is to ask for help. Ask your friends to set you up. Ask them to help you see what you can't. Ask them to give you, especially if you trust them, right? I'm not saying to just ask anybody, but if you trust this person's view on you and they know other people, ask. Tip number five, last but not least. This is probably the most important one. Consciously date yourself. Fall so madly, so deeply in love with you that anybody who comes into your space is extra. Be so deeply entrenched in your own consciousness. Like, allow yourself to be penetrated and permeated with love based on who you be. And anybody who comes into your space, because we are magnetic, we are, we are energetic beings. If you're vibrating at a high level, then the only thing that can come to you is someone else who's vibrating at a high level. When I met Alexi, I was deeply in love with myself. It was the deepest I had ever gone with me. And so when she came into my space, I was grounded enough in who I am that I was sober enough to see who she was. And that, my friends, is exactly what you get to do when you're calling in your person. Hurrah! Blessings and blessings. I hope that this served you in some way. If it did, tag a friend, share it all over the interwebs. It's the only way that my message gets anywhere. I love you all so much. I know that I'm a big personality. I know that I have all this energy and I thank you for seeing me and for being a part of my family. Hashtag I am, we are, love's voice. Hurrah!